Hi there, I'm Susan McCord. Thanks for visiting Dear Cyber Sue. Today's topic is, can I learn to love someone coming from a loveless childhood? You absolutely can learn to love somebody and to love yourself on top of it. The biggest problem for most people is understanding that there's a situation happening. They don't understand why a lot of relationships don't come their way or don't end up working out and it's usually from those cobwebs that are buried inside of you from a very early age and in this case because we're talking about a loveless childhood there's a lot of emotional unavailability that happens to people who were raised this way they don't know what love is because they weren't shown they didn't have that type of environment growing up they don't even know what it means to be in love or to love someone. If you're not shown these really beautiful things when you're young, it takes so much longer to find out what, it, what they are as an adult. There's so many trials and tribulations that a person will go through trying to find out what it is missing in their life. But if you've come to this video because of the title, you already know what is missing in your life. And that is huge. That is a really big part of changing up some patterns that you might be stuck in. This problem affects so many men and women, way more than you're probably aware of. And it's it makes life life's path so much harder because if you don't know what you're looking for, you can keep banging your head against that wall trying to find it out. What is it that's missing? Why? Why am I sort of shut down? Why can't I bring that part of myself to the forefront and make it happen for me? The biggest part of that is because you don't know how. It's really not an easy, easy step forward because you don't have anything to go on. It's so important to put yourself around people who understand what love is. And I know that's hard even to find those people because you're not sure what you're looking for yourself. So as an adult, you're taking all these slow steps to get to where you want to get to because you don't really know the format and what you're supposed to do. I really suggest to people who have had this type of childhood to get some professional therapy to help you deal with those things that are stuck because they are stuck. There's no reason in the world that you shouldn't have love in your life. But you have to get some help sometimes to put you in the direction of understanding what that means. What does that entail? If you have never had that situation where somebody is emotionally available to you and shows you and loves you to everything they've got in them, you're going to try and figure it out for so many years to come. Don't take so long to get there. Talk to somebody about it. There are so many people, as I said a minute ago, that are dealing with this. But the, the, the top answer is they're dealing with it. And that's what you have to do. If you keep burying it and thinking, oh, you know, I'll meet that person one day, you might never meet them because, you, as again, you don't really know what you're looking for. So getting some therapy, they can help get into a deeper place within you internally and find out what actually is going on. Because if you're shut down emotionally, you're not showing very much of anything, then you're a little more stuck than some people might be. Because if people are sad, angry, um, argumentative, whatever emotion you want to put out there, they're feeling something. And this is a good thing because it can help you open up the wounds or, or the, the pain, the sadness that you've had to deal with in your life and try and find a place that you can put yourself to be happier and actually comprehend and understand what transpired when you were a child. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you weren't loved as a child and it's very important to know that because you're just that little child that's looking for something. Your parents are there to teach you. And it may be the reason that it's happening to you, it's that it happened to them, and they haven't broken the behavioral pattern. So they're continuing it. They're taking it on and putting it 
into their children. And then if you don't deal with it, you might continue the pattern and take it to your children. This is why it's so important to, to cut that, that problem area and figure out how to move past it. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take work, but it's so worth it. It's completely worth every ounce of energy you put into to trying to find a way to be able to be emotionally available and accept love into your life. There's also people that come from a loveless childhood that look so hard for love that they end up looking for it in all the wrong places. And this is can be a, a situation that happens for a couple of years out of somebody's life or they keep going back to that same thing again, looking for the love that they're not receiving because that's what they were looking for as a kid. So again, there's another pattern that's being repeated because that's what they know. There's that familiar thing again. So they keep going back to the familiar thing that didn't work in their childhood and now it isn't working in their adult life. Growing up without the role models who teach you about love is a really, really difficult place. And it's so hard to be able to move forward and walk on all the right paths because you're still kind of searching for what it is. What is it that you didn't have? So finding a therapist that can guide you is wonderful. Another great thing to do is every time you have any kind of emotion, write it down. Write down what was going on. Do this for like a couple of months. Just write down everything that you're feeling because there may be some things that trigger you more than others and set you back. So once you know those trigger points, you can work with maybe a therapist on it or even yourself and understand, don't put yourself maybe in those situations if possible. Surrounding yourself with healthy people, healthy scenarios, healthy environments, it will bring you closer to understanding how important having love in your life is and that you can have it. You want to have boundaries. If you're noticing these familiar, uncomfortable, you know, anxiety or churning in your stomach when you're around certain people or certain situations, you want to pull yourself back from those places. Having boundaries is a really, really good thing to have because it'll keep you from repeating scenario after scenario that doesn't work out for you. Understand when something doesn't work out for you. Write it down. What happened during that? Maybe you had a relationship for six months. Write down what happened in it. How did it progress? How did it go and fizzle out? What happened? And then if you want to work with a counselor about that, that will help them to understand you as well. So it's always a good idea to write down so many different things about who you are, what makes you tick, what's missing in your life, what's great about your life, and work from there. Because once you have that, that little booklet in front of you, it's much easier to see what the issue is because sometimes people aren't aware. They're just not aware that they're pushing love away from them. I want you to always remember that you're worthy of love. You're worthy of being loved. You're worthy of having love in your life. It's not your fault. And please don't hold on to it that you did anything wrong because you didn't. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue today. Please leave any comments, subscribe to my channel. I love it when you do. And I will see you next Wednesday. Have a great week, everyone. Take care.